In this episode, we're going to take a picture and make it 3D to bring it to life. So here's a couple of examples of the sort of thing we're doing. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Have you moved his head? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the head animates. <laughs> Is it supposed to be creepy? <laughs> it's not supposed to be creepy, it's a cow in a field. <laughs> and if you look really closely, you can see that the corn stalks are blowing in the breeze, and the cow tilts his head ever so slightly to look at why you're taking his photo, and then he moves it back. <laughs> and then steals your stall! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do our own. Now we're going to do a squirrel that stares into your soul. <laughs> You can always pick pictures where people or animals aren't looking directly into the camera. Probably a good idea. And they won't follow you around the room. We should have done the Mona Lisa. <laughs> copyright. Is this something copyright? No, I can't work. Okay, so anyway, dragging in the Photoshop file. You've already cut all the this picture up into different layers. And the first thing that happens is After Effects knows it's a PSD, so it can bring it in in multiple ways. If you click on the import kind, it can bring in a single layer from your Photoshop file which can be kind of handy mm -hmm. if only if you only want one thing it can bring it in as a composition which means you get a project you get a comp folder uh, with all the layers separate but they are then set to the size of the comp so they crop the images so you, don't, you have less control mm -hmm. or composition retain layer sizes does exactly that it, it keeps all the layers of the size doesn't matter how big they are in the frame okay underneath there we've got layer options so if you are using stroke or color overlay or any of those layers you can either flatten them before they come into after effects or after effects will recreate them now yes both products are adobe but they do these things in a slightly different way so you get the option as to how you're going to adjust them but we're just going to leave it as it is because you haven't used any layer options in the photoshop file mm, no okay the editable styles is what i mean in the photoshop file so just click okay so uneditable style. Just the, yeah, doesn't. If you don't have any, it won't do anything to them. Okay. So what we've got now is a comp called Squirrel 2. If you double click on that comp. And just like that Photoshop document, it's put all the different layers in space and it's remembered and yeah, there's our squirrel. Cute. If you expand Squirrel 2 layers, the folder, there's all those layers. So if you needed another one, if you wanted to bring it into a different comp or anything like that, you've got them there to access. It treats them all as separate layers of footage. Okay. So let's talk through the layers. What have we got here? We've got layer one. If you turn that on and off, let's see what that does. That's a branch. Cool. So if you click on layer one, hit enter and rename it to branch. Let's keep ourselves organized. So. If we look in the project panel, we can see that the comp is massive. It's four, it's pretty much 4K, uh, but not quite. We want this at HD level. So with this blue outline, making sure the comp is selected, go to composition, composition settings, and let's change the width and height to 1920 by 1080. So HD. So it's, it's cropped in what we've got, but it's retained all the sizes. So we could rescale everything right. as we need to. But we're not going to do that now. What we're going to do next is we're going to arrange everything in 3D space. Okay. And to do that, you see we've got all these checkboxes here. Well, one that final column in there is a 3D box. So if you click in onto the, the corresponding checkbox for each layer you make them 3D. Now, it doesn't show much right now. If you switch active camera to top, there we go. That's our plane. That's our plane set at zero pixels in Z depth, if that makes any sense at all to you. Mm -hmm. Probably, oh, I was gonna say probably doesn't. If you select background copy four and hit the P key on to expose the position, we can see that it's arranged at X, this is 960, Y, its coordinates are 540, 
and then it's zero on the Z index. If you, you can either drag that up using the blue arrow and you'll see how it changes that and it's pushing it back further in space. Mm -hmm. Set that up to say 5,000. Cool. Now let's click uh, and do exactly the same for squirrel. Select squirrel, hit P. Now it really is up to you where you arrange everything in 3D space, but what I think to make life easier for us, we'll leave that at zero pixels. Okay. Select now branch, do the same thing with the position, and let's bring this forward. So we'll bring this into a negative number. Yeah, about a thousand to fifteen hundred pixels. So that doesn't show us too terribly much. If you zoom out a bit, you'll see all three planes. Now, probably some people watching this will be screaming at me saying, why aren't I now switching to two views? And so if I go next to top, there's a drop down that says one view and switch to two views. We can see, and if you uh, use that, you'll be able to change that to fit. It's showing us sort of the final one and it's showing us uh, what we're getting. But actually, I think it can get quite confusing when we're trying to adjust everything and do make changes. Are you okay with this? I quite like it, but let's oh, well, see. No, no, okay, let's see if this works then. So, before we rearrange everything and get it all lined up, let's put a camera in the space, and then we'll be looking through the camera while we line up all the objects and everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Go to Layer, New, Camera. And click OK. Okay, so, oh, and drag it just above uh, branch so that we avoid any confusion. And if you expand the camera's transform properties, we've got two things that we're interested in here. And you can see from this view here, we've got our point of interest. So if you just start noodling around with the point of interest, what that's doing is you can see it's adjusting where the camera's looking at. Mm -hmm. And then the position is the physical position of the camera. So the camera is positioned minus 2,600 pixels. So now what we want to do is line everything up so it looks good for our opening shot. And let's leave the camera where it is for the moment in Z space. And instead, let's increase the background size. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then bring the squirrel in. Now he's probably a bit big, isn't he? So we probably want to scale him down. What we want to do now is set keyframes for our point of interest in our position on our camera. Mm -hmm. So do that. And then go ahead, say 10 seconds. And set, and now what we want to do is zoom in. We're sorry, dolly in. Mm -hmm. So we've got some controls to do that. We've got at the top here, we've got our rotation, our pan, and our dolly. So selecting one of those, push in on the squirrel. And you can see, because it's trying to keep the point of interest, Well, mm, that might be all right. Okay, so let's see what you've got so far. Oh, that looks cool. Okay. Now, now we can start doing a little few things to make it look a bit more realistic. Give it a bit more life. Okay. So, the photo the original photographer has used a shallow depth of field, so he's got the background all nice and blurry. Mm -hmm. And we've added in this branch, which is really strong in colour, so um, what we could do is desaturate that a bit. Mm -hmm. um, If we expand the rest of camera options, we've got some really cool features in here, treating this virtual camera more like a real camera. So first thing we're gonna do is if you turn on depth of field, probably won't see too much difference. Mm -hmm. But if you up the blur level, we should start to see some blurring going on with the this the branch in the background and yeah. technically it's also blurring the background but we can't see that because it's already blurred all right so what we can now do is if you scrub forward now we'll probably run into a slight problem as the squirrel 
goes out of focus. So what we want to do is keep the squirrel in focus, at e even though we're moving the camera. Yes. So if you scrub back to the start, although it doesn't really matter, um, we could keyframe at the focus distance, but then every time we adjust the camera, if we make tweaks later on, we'll have to keep changing it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use a shortcut, and we're going to use some programming with inside After Effects called Expressions. And this is one of the simplest expressions, but it's really quite a powerful one. So holding down the Alt key, click on the focus distance stopwatch and that opens up the expressions area but let's now go to what i call the expressions library because i can't find another name for it if you click on the little play symbol it opens up another menu and if you go to vector math because the americans always forget to put the s on things <laughs> let's choose length 0.1.2. So this is going to give us the length between two points in 3D space. So let's highlight point 0.1. Okay. Just go and click and drag on the pick whip and go find the camera's position and let go. For point 0.2, select it all. And now we want the squirrel's position. So drag that all the way down to... And that's it. Now you can click off that expressions area. So now what we're basically doing is ensuring that the squirrel is always in focus. And that's animating an image in 3D. There's more we could do depending on the shot. We could put more animation on the squirrel. <laughs> Let's leave the squirrel. <laughs> this other one I was working on, and it, to be honest, I think it needs more work. But oh. using turbulent displace on the water to create a rippling water, replace the sky so I could animate the clouds moving across. But where I think it needs more work is as you get closer to it, you realize that there's lots of people on the bridge. So I would probably cut the bridge out, remove the people from it, have the bridge as its own layer, and then potentially animate some of the buses moving across. But again, it, it just lifts it from being a still picture. No, I like the water. We're, we're, you're going to have to teach me how to do the water. Okay. Next video is water, everybody. <laughs>